Imagine that you just want to express what you believe. Now, imagine having to spend more than a decade in court just to do that. That's what's still happening to Colorado cake artist Jack Phillips. He's been relentlessly harassed by the state of Colorado and an activist because of his beliefs. But our friends at Alliance Defending Freedom are standing by his side and they need your help. Join with ADF and be a champion for freedom. ADF is on the front lines defending Americans like Jack in court free of charge when their First Amendment freedoms are on the line. And for just $19 a month, you can stand with people like Jack too. So visit joinadf.com slash B and pledge your monthly gift of $19 or more to ADF. ADF is committed to the long game of protecting freedoms now and for generations to come. And uh, I am too. Are you? Because it's really important. Go join adf.com slash B and be a champion for freedom with your monthly gift or any amount of gift today. The Babylon B Podcast. Well, hey, Tyrus, thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure, man. It's been a while. It's been a, what, a little over a year since been the last time. Yeah, yeah, it's been a little while. You were on the podcast a little, probably over a year ago. You did, I want to remind everybody, we ask everybody on our podcast um, if they've ever punched anybody. And you had the best punch. I think you still have the, the reigning, you're the reigning champ really? for the best punching story. You talked about punching some midgets or something and carry them out oh yeah yeah i believe it's a small person small, little sorry uh, little persons yeah, little dwarf. little person dwarf well they were short yeah dwarf, <laughs> maybe you, well you know what i, I can't just, say with any <laughs> specificity <laughs> exactly what um their gifts were to make them that height but um i just know that they were for that particular uh period in my life they were I wouldn't call them worthy adversaries. I think maybe that's why yeah. it was one of those reluctant kind of a things, but mm. they forced my hands. They were picking so on speak. you. They were picking on you. But I gave them every chance not to end yeah. up like that. I, I really did. So <laughs> okay. my conscience is clear. You, I, I, you know. <laughs> well, this, this is the opposite. Just think of Goliath was cool. And, yeah. and David was just a jerk throwing Damn. rocks at everybody. Yeah. And totally. then, and then, and when finally went over, like, hey, cut it out, little dude. Like, we'd look at him completely different. Yeah, you wouldn't say, "Oh man, he's a bully for picking on a little guy." Oh, he stopped the little guy from causing problems. And in this case, it was yeah. uh, pulling ladies on the ground and like grabbing on them. So I, I feel like it was a good deed, given there was a huge size difference. Yeah, well, you're. I mean, you're pretty fit and strong. You're, you know, obviously you go to Planet yeah. Fitness. Uh huh. No, can't say hate hate planet hate planet fitness with a passion. Okay. I'll tell you why. Because they make it impossible. When I was on the road in the WWE, we used to have to find gyms when we'd be on a tour or you know, you, you try everywhere you go, you try to find like a map of where you go. And then Planet Fitness had started popping up everywhere. So but what they would do is is when you would go in there, you, and even if you had a Planet Fitness membership, they'd be like, Oh, that's only for that state. So you have to sign a little something for this state. And then you end up getting hit with like two or three memberships if you travel a lot. When you try to cancel them, they tell you you have to physically go into the specific oh. gym to cancel yeah. it, and you have to send a a letter. Yeah. So I mean, they they really go above and beyond because their whole premise is is to get people that aren't serious about working out to get a membership and then forget about it, not come anymore, and keep billing them. So that's all planned. Planet Fitness has absolutely nothing to do with fitness. LA Fitness does the same thing. We had the hardest time canceling our me membership for LA Fitness. It's easier to get divorced yeah. <laughs> than it is to leave Planet Fitness. Like, we could you imagine if you had to go back to the original place where you first met <laughs> to, to get your divorce? You know what I'm saying? Like, nope, you have to go back to the, the that bar. But that no, no, Starbucks no, no. doesn't it, exist anymore. What do I do now? Yeah, that's not, well, I guess you're. it did say death till part. So read the clause. <laughs> well, we figured out the shortcut to getting your membership canceled this week. And that's you, you're a woman. You go in the women's locker room and you say, hey, that's a man over there. Say, hey, get out of the women's spa. And that's how you yeah. that's the shortcut to getting can to getting yeah. your membership. canceled. Hey, man, <laughs> I might I might try that. Just get just do it. man. That's how you get it. That's how you get it canceled. Uh huh. But, that is ridiculous, though, that you would. Why? Why does everybody hate women so much? I don't, or <laughs> I guess it's hard to hate what you don't know. So it's Maybe, weird. It's just yeah. weird. 
I just, I never, it used to be the other way around. It used to be if somebody said something disparaging or a woman was in trouble, people would, men would flock. They come running. What's the problem? What's going on? You know, even other women, like everything. Okay. Like it's a woman. How dare you, sir? That's a woman. Now it's, I guess it's just gloves off. It doesn't matter. She should have known better mm-hmm. if she really is a woman at this point. Like yeah. it's just, it's crazy how it's changed. And, uh, I really hope it gets back to the way it's, it's supposed to be. Mm. It's really sad that we are not protecting our women, even in, in places where they're supposed to be protected, like a gym. Mm. Yeah. And that's the whole point of having security in a gym and have separate locker rooms as a place where a woman can change and get in and out without any drama. Like, I just don't feel like a bathroom at a gym is where you need to have your quote unquote Rosa Park moment. If you're a, a man with the, who wants to transition to a woman, I think you can be respectful of other women they might not be ready to deal with what you got going on. I just feel like whenever it's public, it should be with the group, you know, individual behind your doors. But when you're in public, you need to think about other people too. So I just find this, these stories are always so random and just don't make any sense. Like why would you purposely go out of your way other than to be on camera or get attention? Mm. Yeah, that's funny. Rosa Parks moment. I like that Rosa Parks moment because this probably is in their head. Yeah, like this is. But my... it's a manufactured. Yeah, it's not a real Rosa Parks right. moment. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. you're not Rosa Parks. You're an annoying person seeking attention. But because they put so much weight on everybody's specialness or whatever you want to call yourself, uh, that it, it is a, a big moment, and then everyone talks about it, and we all get sucked into it. And it's like I've never been in a position in my life any time where I felt like if I walked into a room and somebody was uncomfortable, and I'm a big dude. I immediately go out of my way to try to make them feel comfortable. So if I walked in the room and, and you guys, oh man, I would go, hey, let me step out so you guys can get changed. I mean, it just seems to me, even if you wanted to use that room, there's ways to be polite about it or make sure it's clear or whatever. But I just feel like it's just, it's so intrusive to the g- general public's privacy. Like you should have some some decorum in when you're in a public setting. Hmm. Yeah. That's a, that's a good thought. <laughs> <laughs> crazy yeah crazy thought crazy yeah thought. This, can you believe that people this guy are, sounds like a far right extremist yeah. just I mean, you're in, into fitness so obviously you're an just, all right uh extremist right? everybody <laughs> yeah. just try yeah. to be cool you know <laughs> they don't have to know each other we don't have to respect we don't need to know everybody's nickname and everyone's dreams and admirations but we can give you know the the bubble rule you know just keep your stuff within your bubble and if somebody enters your bubble and wants to know then unload tell them everything they want to know but just don't assume that we all have to know what's going on in your world. It's just really arrogant. Well, you got you got a new show on Outkick called Maintaining with Tyrus, and you want to have ca- casual conversations with people, hang out, and, and not be super produced, and you don't have to do four hours of Joe Rogan podcast, and, and let's just talk. No, I think well, that's a great idea. Yeah, well, no one can do Joe Rogan but Joe Rogan. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's, that's a lot of, there's a lot of people trying. You know, there's a lot of seven, eight-hour podcasts. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. My eight-hour gardening just, podcast yeah. I listen to every morning. I just listen to and it all it, day. It does, <laughs> and it just doesn't get warmed up until hour six. Hour <laughs> six is when the – that's when the onions peel, and that's when the stuff comes out. Right. You know, so <laughs> When people are so tired, they start saying whatever they think. The hallucination conversation is where the, <laughs> is where the truth lies. How so, long is your podcast going to be? If it's not four hours, what do you, what format? I mean, what possible format could there be? So it's there? it's – um, Okay, so I wouldn't call it a podcast, uh, but it's uh, doesn't each interview doesn't really have a time limit on it, so it could be anywhere from twenty minutes to forty five minutes, depending on if I like the person enough. Like if we sometimes <laughs> you'll meet somebody. No, I'm just because here's the deal: as soon as they sit, as soon as they sit in a chair, it's on. Like the interview starts. Like when they're getting adjusted, and everything. It's like, hey, what's up? What's up? So everyone knows it's like there's no like, all right, ready, lights, camera, like even teasing the guy who does like that before it starts and then it's on and it's just wherever it goes. And I've been lucky so far to where I've gotten to some really cool conversations, but more so the only house rule that I have is that you have to give a solution. And, uh, I had KT McFarlane on man. And I'm telling you, first of all, it was one of the coolest women on the planet. Why there's not a movie about her. I don't know. Like she's James Bond got nothing on her. But she could, she solved, and it's, I'm not going to give away details so you can watch, but literally she solved the world's problem in like legit 48 seconds. So mm-hmm. the one thing we try to do is just 
if you do speak on something, all I ask is you give me a solution. Because all we hear is everybody's issues or their side, but we never hear what's the solution. You know, and, and unless it's uh, you got to end racism. I mean, other than that, that's always the solution is you got to stop racism, which is not a solution. It's mm-hmm. a talking point. So, and of course, that's the answer for anything. doesn't matter what it is. How do we get more flamingos to, to breed, to get, you know, to eat some of these flies coming out of those salt lakes in Utah? And they'll say, well, it's racism that's keeping the, you know, the flamingos <laughs> from doing what they need to do. So, it's really keeping the flamingos down. <laughs> s- s- systemic. <laughs> systemic. Flamingoism. Flamingo racism. So, well, that's that's an interesting approach because it is what you see on Twitter all the time. It's like, you know, this morning you had the horrible bridge collapse, this, this ship running into the bridge. And y- yeah. y- people are just like, oh, this is capitalism. You know, or it's like, oh, this is the problem yeah, exactly, with society. Exactly. You know, and you're just like, well, what's what's your answer? Like, what's... You know, what's your prescription for that? And that's a that's an interesting kind of like a hopeful, more optimistic way to yeah. to approach things, I think. Because my whole thing is 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 we've all heard it. Every one of everyone has a list of complaints about what's going on. But to say, okay, cool, so how would you fix it? Yeah. I should have cha- I should have called it the follow up question because we just don't have it anymore. Like when when you see these uh, especially press briefings and stuff, when they ask a question and the answer is just complete BS to follow up. Well, how so, Mr. President? I mean, is that, and it's simple, just how so. And then they can never explain it. They never want to give solutions. It's always, well, the Republicans did it. Or this, and then you see it on the other side too, where they blame the other side for the issue. Okay, we know what the problem is. Do you have a solution? Hmm. Can you break it down for us? How do you fix this? We, we just don't get it. And that's across the board. So the one of the things, even if it, even if it doesn't make sense, even if it's wrong, if the three of us decided how we, we're going to solve the border crisis. And we came up with these ideas and they're like, you know what? That's not going to work. Here's why. But at least we're putting something, because if you put an idea, even if your idea isn't it, it is the beginning of other ideas that come together. And maybe a combination of people giving solutions, Mm. you might get where you need to go instead of pointing the finger the whole time, blaming, because those are talking points. But I think we see both sides do it because, it, we keep watching, you know, like they keep creating fake problems to solve. Like what is a woman instead of dealing with inflation? And we're all arguing over what is a woman? And we all need to be like, why were we even, that's like when you're, uh, your two year olds trying to argue with you about whether they have to go to bed or not. You're not, there's no reason to have the argument. You know what it is. You know that your bedtime, I'm putting you to bed at seven o'clock or whatever the deal is. We know that what a woman is, but we allow ourselves to get caught up in these arguments that take us away from what's really important. Mm. Mm. Now, are there any famous uh, interviewers that you base your style on, like uh, Don Lemon? <laughs> uh, I want uh, Don Lemon's the guy I want on my show, man. That I, would be good. I, I would watch that. I, got, I would watch that because I feel like I, I feel like Don before President Trump, he was a little left leaning, but he was a decent newsman. I didn't have, I didn't always agree with everything he said, but I didn't have an issue with when he spoke, and then. He just changed with the Trump thing. And I think a lot of it was the, and the network was hyping him up and they're pushing, pushing, pushing. And then he didn't get vanquished by the right. He didn't get, you know, it wasn't truth social that got him fired. From, his own turned on. Him. And for basically starting to call out, just, just basically saying some pretty across the line stuff. It wasn't anything crazy. And now he's gone. And then he gets a, He's now on X, and I was like, I always thought that was kind of cool that Elon's giving lanes to both sides of the aisle. You got Dr. Carson and Don Lemon on the same on the same thing. That's kind of cool, and uh, but it couldn't get past one interview <laughs> because it's just the, the the entitlement. I'm just, I think he didn't want to work for Elon to jump. I think the interview itself was just there. Maybe he thought CNN would see that and call him and be like, we were wrong. He, <laughs> come home yeah you did it we still you love know, you so yeah but yeah. they didn't so well i guess that's the way to, he had great demands though i wish i had his yeah agent. you gotta have some of those that's yeah i just want that cyber just, truck <laughs> i know the was it he gets a piece to the company yeah. eight million uh-huh. for showing up uh four million in unmarked bills uh every <laughs> new a- tesla yeah. and he wants <laughs> I think it was 146 acres on Mars. I think that's what it was. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Beachfront property before yeah. there's a beach. 
Uh-huh. He wants to put. He wants his his lot of land already put down. So and it looks like he was close to getting it because the interview happened. So he wasn't too far off. So that's the that's the other side. Is like you might not have got all that, but you got it. He was in the ballpark because no one's going to let you do an interview if uh, you're not close. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you think he's going to have some buyer's remorse a couple of weeks from now? But like he was like, no. I almost had farmland and mars and, <laughs> and <laughs> what was your take on you you probably saw clips from it what was your take on that interview and do you think that elon musk was right for firing don lemon i think that was the worst interview with your boss i think i've ever seen <laughs> so he was that, such a jerk right <laughs> it, it was like that was the exit that was the exit interview when you have a better job <laughs> that's you right. know what I'm saying like right. you gave you two weeks it's the last day you get ready to go to your new job that's paying you an extra like double salary and your boss is like, Hey, uh, Tyrus, what was your experience being an assistant manager at Arby's? And I'm, you know, and I'm be like, you know what? I didn't like the food. I thought the sandwiches are, uh, uh, I thought your leadership style was off and that's why I'm at Burger King. So deuces I'm out. <laughs> you know, it was like a burn to bridge. Like he was, <laughs> it was just not somebody, even if you don't like your boss, you fake it to make it <laughs> for sure. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like something, but that whole interview, it was like, uh, it, it felt like Elon dated Don's sister in high school and <laughs> took her out, took her for a nice dinner, promised her the world and never called her back. And Don <laughs> had to deal with her crying and, you know, her, him breaking his sister's heart. And they're finally sitting down together for the first time and, Don's not letting nothing go. He just, he just seemed really angry the whole interview. And I just didn't understand it. Yeah. And I felt Elon was like, Elon was like, wait, what do you do? You know, this is your job, right? (laughs) I felt like at some point Elon was like looking around like, yeah, okay, look, we were all slaves once. Okay. You do know this is your first day on the job, right? And this is what you going to do. Like, so I don't, I I don't even think he got off the set and his phone was a text from Uh Tulsa Pecker. Whatever, you know, when you start getting, I'm not getting texts from Elon right now, but I would imagine getting a text from a billionaire who owns X is probably a little cooler than the average text. Maybe some <laughs> trumpets playing, you know, maybe a, maybe yeah. a Tesla drives by and beeps at you to let you know you have a text. It's something cool. Yeah. You're a billionaire. It's got to be something cool. I think but, Kyle, uh, yeah, Kyle I, I guarantee you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm willing to bet he got, he didn't get offset before he got a, a HR needs to talk to you. So... <laughs> That is the greatest mm-hmm. firing. I used to think half baked was the greatest firing, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, dude was like, "F you, F you, you're cool. I'm out." That was probably the coolest one on the job I'd ever seen until mm-hmm. I seen Don Lemon interview Elon Musk. Except I don't think his plan was to get fired. That's the if it was brilliant, you got <laughs> us. Well played, sir. I just feel like it, it wasn't. It's kind of hard to believe that this is real life and not satire. Under New York law, social media networks must create a system for users to report online speech the state disfavors and endorse the state's mislabeling of some speech as hateful conduct. In other words, the First Amendment freedoms of satirical websites like the Babylon Bee hinge on whether they'll adopt and help enforce the state's ideology. But free speech shouldn't turn on whether the government has a sense of humor. It's clear, government officials are trying to bypass the First Amendment to keep ideas they disagree with out of the marketplace. Join ADF as they stand with the B and others in defense of free speech. Just $19 a month will fuel the stand to help protect our freedoms. Join ADF.com slash B and pledge your monthly gift of $19 or more to ADF. Together, we will boldly advance our right to live and speak the truth. Every gift helps. Go to joinadf.com slash B and stand for free speech with your gift today. No. Yeah, no. You're in New York. Um, do you have any squatters right now or? Hmm. I'm, I'm technically a squatter uh, oh, you are in squatter. my office. Okay. I squat in my office, man. I never, uh, so you're I never taking go anywhere advantage. but my hotel room. Yes. Take advantage of the squatter's rights. Hmm. Well, there's free electricity in my office. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a shower in the gym i could literally live here and and just be just fine i got my xbox there's a cafeteria on the third that's great got everything you could possibly Mm -hmm. need except the fact that you're supposed to go home every night when your ship's off that's the only issue i'm having yeah but i'm sure i can swing that the owners can't come back in (laughs) oh yeah and you're good which is cool because i have the same last name as the 
owner so I can maybe pull some stuff with security. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa I'm a Murdoch. Please. Yeah. Mm. Let me in. <laughs> you know, you know, so. That's great. That's crazy. So, hey, um, what do you think about Biden Trump? Biden versus Trump coming up? Or do you think we're totally boned or what? No, I think uh, language you guys have been using lately. I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty rough. It's not the, not, the, not the classy B that I'm used to. Oh, gosh. To. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. It's, it's okay. So, it's all. Listen, it's a tough time. I don't think it's going to be much more than it is right now. We're going to basically, there'll be no de- awesome debates. There will be like no showdown with Biden and Trump. They finally have a debate. It won't be. And it'll be Kamala. And I'm, I'm my money's on Tim Scott, but I could be wrong. But uh, mm-hmm. or whomever it will be have somebody trying to say policy. And then Kamala is going to say, you're the one who made me take a bus when I was a child. And Tim <laughs> will try to explain to her that he's younger than her. And then she'll call him racist. And that'll be the mm-hmm. big, the big moment. But I think Probably every true. time, if, if, if the, if the Trump campaign, if they would take any advice from me, every time we spoke, every time we made an appearance anywhere, the opening clip is those men running over our, our soldiers at that border wall. Yeah. I would be continue to run that clip nonstop, just mm-hmm non-stop because that is about as real as it gets and you can't argue that like that's the emboldenedness and what our border looks like right now uh and that's just an area where we had soldiers or at least try and then their hands are tied behind their back because they're basically out there with unarmed trying to stop these people and it's just a, it's a dangerous time so i think if he sticks with deeds uh president trump seems to be a little more laid back a little more calculated you know like he's kind of I think at this point, um, he can't allow himself to get into the the old battles like he used to because that's what they want. They want him to get into these battles with these anchors and these new, and these uh, TV personalities to distract or try to show people what's going on. But I, I think Trump's playing a really good. This is poker right now. I'd be I'd be going all in on him right now. I think it's. I don't think it's going to be a close election. To be honest with you, and it's not anything that Trump's saying or doing. It's just. People are just not happy. The, the mood of the country just feels, everyone just kind of feels really just doesn't feel good. I guess it's a weird, and I'm not a feelings guy, but the to describe when it comes to issues of talking about stuff, but it just the general feeling that I've been, and I travel everywhere, is that people just don't feel good about America right now. And I think, and they're looking directly at the top. They just don't like the way he presents himself. You, and here's the thing, they voted against trump not for biden so with the exception of that small base that was biden biden never really so i think they have the biggest buyer's remorse so that's why i think it's going to be hmm. and they're going to the biggest fight's going to be the mainstream media trying to find things to take trump but it's literally like every bad guy movie we've ever seen everything they do attempt to do to him makes him more popular <laughs> so i uh, just stop doing stuff it's like stop like I feel like Scott, you're like, Dr. Let's just go in there. No, they always do elaborate things, but he just seems to always turn them around and the American people are seeing it and they're just not getting the, the traction that they thought. I, I think all these charges and stuff, I thought it was going to be very different. They, I think they thought one of the other up and coming uh, Republican candidates would have got a huge boost with that. And it, it just didn't work. Hmm. Well, I'm voting for Biden myself. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. So you got this uh, stand-up comedy tour going on right now. So what kind of, do you like tell jokes about airplanes and how small things are on airplanes or what kind of, what kind of humor? Uh, what what other material? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, that's why you buy the, you go to the show. Oh, oh like, so you, I don't, you guys, okay. All right. you, know, you know, you know, you guys are very clever. I like the Thank way you. you do things. You come, you come off very sweet, innocent, and then you leave a little <laughs> sarcastic thing. And I, I like very clever. You guys, you guys, no wonder why you guys are still around. But um, I have a stand-up special on Fox Nation, uh, and my stand-up is about an hour and a half. I don't do, I don't write jokes in the sense like I write like thirteen words on a piece of paper, and I just kind of go from there. And then uh, as I build it, and at the end of the at the end of the tour, then I'll do another special. But uh, each show is it's never quite the same. And if there's someone says something in the audience and I get off on a whim on something, we just kind of go there. But it's just old school comedy. Nobody's safe. So, you know, we make fun of everybody. Make fun of myself a lot. Uh, make fun of my kids. Um, 
I get roasted by my wife the first 10 minutes of the show. She <laughs> opens it. Um, so and then, you know, the meet and greet, I get a lot of get a lot of fun. I do a lot of a Q&A and stuff at the end. Sometimes if time remaining and uh, some of the interactions I get are pretty, pretty cool. So That's awesome. uh, and then, like wow. I said, you can, you can check them out on my Twitters. And here's the thing. I guess I have to say this. So on Facebook, and I'm sure you guys have to deal with this a lot too. Do you guys get a lot of, let me ask you a question. So do you guys get a lot of trolls and fake yous out there? Is there a lot of fake Babylon bees out there? Or fake star? Do you guys have a lot of fake accounts that you have to deal with? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes we get those fake accounts that try to try to impersonate. Sure, yeah. So I have this fake on Facebook. I don't have a Facebook account at no. all. I've had, I have two. Now my wife made a fan page for Tyrus specifically for the stand-up show, to where she can, if people have problems with tickets or they want to write a review about the show, you know, and eventually, you know, you get a blue check or whatever because apparently I'm a celebrity of some sort, right? Whatever. Um. There's an evil Tyrus pretending to be me who is trying to prey upon uh, the female base of my of my fans and a lot of people at Fox News and always asking for money to help him escape his his wife because she's got all his money. Um, except like they're going to have dinners and I'm supposed to go to spaghetti at one place and and I'm supposed to go to uh, judo classes with another and they're sending money and there's private. I'm doing these private events and this this. And, this catfish, this hmm. horrible person who's stealing all this money. We find, and I'm only know about it because get this fellas, my wife's calling me at work to tell me what fake me is up to <laughs> because she's getting people. So she's getting people uh-huh. that are contact. Like, well, Tyra said that he was going to give me, you know, if I sent him $300 to help him get away from you, he was going to come stay with me a while. So what happened to Tyrus? What have you done to him? And, and then I'm like, wait a minute, I'm in trouble. For what fake me doing? So I didn't think this was a big deal. I'm like, well, just let face. I just told just contact Facebook and just send them the pictures and let them know it's is this getting to be like a few hundred people, right? And um, they basically said, well, they have more followers than you did. <laughs> Whoa! So so even though she's sending Facebook the stuff that this individual is doing uh-huh. because it's Tyrus and I work for Fox News or the fact. That and there's no po- politics on there. It's all about stand up show. I had a great time, blah, 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 or I want to get this, that, whatever. So it's not even that kind of a thing. They still kept saying, and then they came back with, we're going to deactivate your account. Whoa. <laughs> so th- they would rather deactivate <laughs> the real fan page where I'm like, and I'm the only one like, getting involved. I'm like, here, give my driver's license or whatever they ask for, and let them know it's improved to have a fan page or whatever. And uh, not good enough. They were fine with the fake one. And even when we're sending them, telling them. So I finally said, so I'm going to deactivate that and tell my fans to be like, listen, if it's not these two things, don't do it. But I think it's time people start suing Facebook for this stuff because they, they, they know the people who are in charge of this stuff. And they look at it and if they say, oh, if it's someone that's right, we yeah. don't like them or whatever, but you're fine with, I mean, I'm talking about single moms sending, you know, three or $400 every two weeks to help this dude out. And I get it. There is some personal responsibility, but people can be taken advantage of, especially if they think they're actually talking to the real person that they watch or whatever. And it just, it's unbelievable. The amount of monies and stuff that this, because we all laugh about catfish stuff that we see the MTV show, but you think about how many people's life this is ruined or how many kids yeah, have felt yeah. been susceptible to sex trafficking with catfishing and stuff oh, yeah. like that. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking long and hard about soon because I feel like, like there was just this was uh, DeSantis just passed the thing we had to be fourteen to be on social media or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's not good enough. It's just not. It's the it's the parents because how long does it take us to write a fake birth date on the thing? I mean, oh, come totally. on. Like you know what I'm saying? That's not even a. It should be that you should have to show ID to have a social media account because if you did that, then there's no more fake. The sex traffickers can't pretend to be thirteen year old little girls to lure boys in, and they can't be. Or forty-four year old men pretending to be something else. Well, the so I research think it would be a really good thing. The research is very clear on the negative impact of social media on children. So I yeah. don't know why they are making it's it, crystal clear. It's crystal clear. They know. There's two things about your story. One of them is that you got in trouble for what fake you was doing. It's almost like when your wife wakes yes. up from a dream and she's mad at you in the morning because yes. you did something in the dream. <laughs> yeah, <I had laughs> that's a, so yeah, funny. It, it, and your wife and runs your flattering. social media. You're, I love yeah. that too. So like, My wife does too. I love that. 
Here's the funny no. part is when they come to confess <laughs> that they've been sending money to run off with me and they're messaging uh, either my wife's personal assistant, Sarah or her to tell on, like we're trying to get Tyrus away from his, his wife. She's horrible to him, but she has all his money and we've been talking for months and then <laughs> you're, you're contacting his family, his wife to tell him, help you make sure this is the right Tyrus to help you run off with. Like, it's just crazy it's complicated to me. And then I got, and then I got to hear about it. And I'm like, listen, I, it's not me. Okay. <laughs> That's all I can say. And I don't, I didn't care. I was like, listen, if you're dumb enough to be catfish, that's on you. But then when I started really thinking about it, this dude is taking pictures of stuff, videos of stuff. He's grabbing everything off my site, everything off, anything he can find. Anytime I'm on TV, like he's more dedicated to my career than I am. He is a better, <laughs> better Tyrus than I am because he doesn't, all he does is sit around all day and message and follow and buy, sit on social media. And if he hunts, let's say he hunts 30, 30, 40 people a day and he gets, two or three people a day to send him a couple hundred bucks here and there. He's actually got a pretty good thing going on. Oh yeah. He's yeah, making I, a lot of money. And it, I, sh- I should have been fake Tyrus as a career. <laughs> I yeah, could be but fake I'm Kyle. just like, and that's just, <laughs> and you think about a wide, wider scale with some of the bigger, st- like bigger stars have more reach. Yeah. But right, this right. is going on. Like, I mean, it's just bigger stars than Tyrus. Even, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I can think, so. I, there's literally three guys mm. in line downstairs getting a, getting a sandwich right now that are more popular than I am. And I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> All right. Well, as we're wrapping up here, uh, here, let's turn the cameras off real quick. Cameras are off. Uh, what do you really think about Greg Gutfeld? <laughs> oh, you promised the cameras are off. Yeah. Uh, off. I, I think so. Yeah. I think, uh, I think about him 40 minutes a day. And the rest of my <laughs> after day. That is to, after <laughs> that, it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> unless he sends me a, unless he sends me a movie review, uh, cause he's, <laughs> He's always he's a, a staunch movie critic. So if he finds a good flick, he'll send it to me. And uh, he has yet to send me a bad one yet. So oh, uh, I'm, that's, I'm sorry that's, for making you think about Greg Gutfeld for an extra thirty seconds today. I, uh, I just raised my I just raised my fee for this interview. So yeah. uh, <laughs> doubled his fee for this interview. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Um, all right, well everybody, check out Tyrus's new show on Outkick called Maintaining with Tyrus. And uh, we'll have the link also to all his uh, his comedy dates. So that's pretty great. And, we uh, get, yeah, we we got to get you you guys on the um, Outkick. We're gonna get you guys to come on. Yeah, we'd love to. Great. Do a double cool. interview on yeah. maintaining. Ooh, exactly. I like it. Yeah, I'll I like put my that. hands behind Jarrett and do one of those yeah. like improv. Yeah, like hand things. Hey, grab the milk. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Now I think about it, I think I'm booked. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think we're good. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Double. The, hello. I got, I got, I got libs of TikTok coming on next week. So oh, it's yeah. a little, oh yeah, you know, it's a little too much. You guys That's are a little too much. Similar. Yeah. yeah. Never heard of her. Yeah, I don't know. That's great. Now, I mean, you know, what's, <laughs> Just, real quick, I know we got to go. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I had to do. I don't know if you guys saw. If you get a chance, look it up. Um, I was on Pierce Morgan's show, and mm-hmm. they were arguing. You know, there was a super uh, left wing lady, the, the reporter that was going after her, like all the trouble she's caused. And I'm grabbing my face like this in the little panel box. <laughs> I'm like, you don't, I'm like, she's not homophobic. She's not racist. She's a mirror. She just retweets stuff. You guys said, it's not even a skill. It's like lip syncing. It's like, this is, what are we doing here? You don't know her. Like, we're, you know, she's not a racist. You're just saying this stuff. And then I just said, Pierce, if you don't change the subject, I'm going to punch you in the stomach next time I see you. And he, <laughs> he quickly changed he the finally, subject. <laughs> he finally changed the subject. He's like, all right, now we're going to go into a uh, trans woman uh, kills a man. Is she responsible? And I went, I'm, I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm just done. I'm just done. I'm just done. Like, he just but, cuts uh, off yeah, the but, feed. He's like, I'm out of here. I'm out. But off. I was like, when I, when I broke, this is what makes me crazy was I broke it down to what she did. And the lady was like, and she needs to stop. It's not, I need to go home. So <laughs> that's what I, I, I'm just, I'm getting to that point in my career when I hear some of this stuff, I'm just like, stop it. You, you're making <laughs> that up. You know, 
<laughs> just stop it. Like stop. I'm, it's gonna be my new catchphrase. Just stop just it. Just stop, stop it. Like Bob, be, Bob Newhart. That could be that could have been the name of the show. Just stop <laughs> just it. Just stop it. Just Tyrus. stop it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just have people on and you let them start doing their thing. And I'll be like, just stop it. Well, thanks for coming on. <laughs> <I'll get> some... <laughs> people would tune in for that, actually. Yeah, that actually would, that's <laughs> yeah actually just to see how long before we end the interview. <laughs> exactly. Hi, my name is just stop it. Just stop. I'm out. We're done. Yeah. I'm I gonna, can't. you know, yeah, I'm gonna have to start getting some of uh, those wild weirdos that come on Jesse's shows and stuff to do like the wherever they are, like people from exchange encounters and get some just crazy, crazy some conspiracy theories and some just some fun. I gotta think, I gotta rethink my whole for show now. Thanks, fellas. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, you yes, know that's what we do. We do that well. Try to have the world's fastest podcast. That's it. Yeah. I would do 30 I would seconds. That. Yeah, it's better than the Joe Rogan, you know, four hours. Know. Thing. Joseph Rogan. Uh, we can do it in 45 seconds. Let's do it. And that's <laughs> because we have a third, we have a 30 second intro song yeah. and that's it. And, that's and then the whole, just, yeah. they, you know what? Introduce just stop them. It. Thanks for coming on. Just stop it. <laughs> stop it. But Next I was going to, but wait a minute. Yep. Just nope. stop it. This is actually you, a good idea. You, yeah. And <laughs> I came up with idea. it just for the record. It's yours. Mm. Patent it. It's okay. all you. I'm patenting it right now. All right. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, Tyrus. And uh, until next time, just stop it. Just stop it. (laughs) Hashtag just stop it, fellas. T-shirts will be out tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, This is great. Thank you so much. Thank you.